I sometimes get an itch of sorts to hear about experiences interpreted as of a benevolent nature. If you have had an experience that you would consider to be benevolent or anything along those lines, I would love to hear from you. I would like to share it on my channel for others to hear, to offer insight for anyone listening, as we are all in this learning together. If you've had an experience along these lines and would be willing to let me share it here, you can email me at campingwithsasquatch at proton.me. Hey Martin, I felt compelled to share my story with you from your video five days ago. Where do I start? That's the question I struggled with for the better part of the last year, how to tell my story. I haven't yet told it on my own channel and realized I had plans to that kept getting sidetracked. That's where it began in thinking about all of it. The name came to me or the title of the video that would be me telling my story. This friends with monsters concept, I thought I'd try out for the name of the channel as well. And it just kind of stuck. I'd hit a lull or a point where the channel was just not growing subscribers. The name changed from green country forest people which was the first name of the channel to friends with monsters was a good one. I was worried it would not be, but it has all been positive. I was maybe a little reluctant to go from the perspective of forest people to monsters or what people would think or misconstrue the idea. I meant no disrespect towards the forest people and calling the channel that. It just seemed to fit. I can't explain it. Except that in processing everything that's happened to date, it feels a little hard to believe. I don't believe it myself at times. It's like this isn't my life. I'm watching outside myself at times. I can't explain it, but who can you tell or talk about it with? other than your peers, right? That's how I reached out to Long Island Mike. I started having encounters a couple of years ago now after moving to Oklahoma, but my story did not begin there. It started in North Carolina when I was living down by Mount Pisgah. In 2014, I had moved to a small cottage about a mile from the base of Mount Pisgah in Candler, North Carolina where I was visited on at least three distinct occasions by a Sasquatch during the fall of that year. The first two or three times it happened, I was not aware of what was taking place at the time it happened. I experienced a phantom odor in my home. It was the strongest smell of musk and urine, and I thought an animal must have been getting under the home or on the porch or under it. The smell was mainly in the front part of the house the times it happened. And it was like a wall of funk would just hit you as you passed from the kitchen to the living area in the front part of the house. It happened several times like that. There would be this phantom odor and it would be really strong. We would sort of walk into it mainly because we would hang out in the back part of the house. And as mysteriously as it came, it would go as well. After about 25 to 30 minutes, the smell was just gone. No lingering remnants. That's what was so weird about it. It happened about three times that I remember, and then a few weeks after that, there was a small animal skull left on the back porch step facing the door. Like you could not have missed it when you exited the door. It was like it was placed there, looking at the back door where we exited all the time to where the car was parked. 
so it knew to leave it where I'd find it. The other thing that happened during this time, and I did not connect all of this until later, was that there were pine needles and small bows from the nearby tree placed all over the back porch one day. It actually happened twice. Remember that we had, I was married at the time, gone out for the day into Asheville and come home a few hours later, only to find the covered back porch area was littered with pine bows. I thought, who keeps leaving these damn pine needles all over the back porch? My mind conjured images of mystery landscapers, but no, my landlord wouldn't have done it and, and was not there and didn't work on the yard that day. I remember thinking that as I swept them off the porch. At the time this happened, I had literally just begun searching for Bigfoot videos on YouTube, looking into the subject again to see if there was more to it. I did not expect to have Sasquatch show up at my back door or stink up the living room for that matter. I was not ready. I had no frame of reference for this kind of thing in spite of being a Reiki 4 practitioner, energy worker, and into shamanism, I had no clue what was happening. I was a little freaked out by it at the time. I had also been having all kinds of animal encounters, totems, etc., which at the time I didn't know was connected to this. They will use animals to get your attention. So sometime later, I separated after the loss of my oldest son, which I was still grieving the loss of family, my mom, and my son at the time. I had moved and was living in South Asheville and I became aware of elementals living around me and under my window on this knoll where I was visited by hummingbirds and black bears. We had everything there, a screech owl in the trees at night, but I was unaware of Sasquatch. I had only started developing a relationship with the elementals. Being an energy worker, I knew you can photograph energy or helper spirits when you practice Reiki or light body activations, which I was doing at the time. I had seen a few photos of some red orbs taken beside garden gnomes at a retreat center and was intrigued by the idea. I had wanted to see the elementals and that's really where it began, though it took several years later for me to start photographing them. It was after moving here and listening to podcasts again. The subject of Sasquatch came up again and again, and I learned it was kind of a thing here in Oklahoma, in that many people have had encounters or sightings, and from my own estimate, it is somewhere like one in five people has had some type of sighting or encounter or has direct firsthand knowledge from a family member. I think it's like two out of five people believes in the existence of Bigfoot and Dogman in Oklahoma. So I started listening to these podcasts and one in particular is called Strange Familiars, where I learned that the gifting of animal skulls is a Sasquatch behavior. I put two and two together and it hits me like a ton of bricks what happened when I lived by Mount Pisgah. That I was visited by Sasquatch and what at the time seemed kind of weird or out of place now made sense. I felt bad for rejecting this offering out of fear of not understanding the significance of it. I had the realization that it started before then. It went back to my childhood. Being a latchkey kid of the 70s, a neighbor finds me sitting on the porch after dark at the age of five. My dad having dropped me off after his visitation and my mother was not home yet. The neighbor took me in until my mother arrived and I guess registering her shock left me kind of damaged because I asked her why she was upset and she said, kids should not be out after dark alone. The boogeyman will get you. Who tells that to a five-year-old? It always stuck with me, but back then, that's what they would tell kids, and they would never tell you who or what the boogeyman was. So you're left wondering until one day you grow up only to find out the boogeyman is real. 
About a year or so after this incident, I had more childhood trauma, dysfunctional family drama. My mom was briefly remarried and we moved to West Jefferson, North Carolina, in the mountains from the Piedmont foothills. During that time, I remember moving out of a haunted rental property, which was a positive ghost experience, into a new mobile home placed on the land where this shared glass business was my mom started. Every night over a period of a few weeks before we moved out, there were rocks thrown at the mobile home. It tends to be one of the odd things in life from that time that I'll never forget. It was also at this time, after moving to Oklahoma, that I learned that rock throwing was Sasquatch as well as human behavior. So what does one do when they have the realization that they are friends with monsters? I wanted to go and find them where they were but didn't know where to begin to look. I started looking at places on a map that I thought would make good research areas. I felt drawn to this place called Heavener Runestone Park. It was there that I had my first encounter in Oklahoma, Easter weekend, a year ago. After that, I was hooked and began looking for other places with the right criteria. They had to be within two hours of a drive, preferably closer to Tulsa, publicly accessible and easy to get there. I started going to parks around here, thinking that may be a good place to start looking after watching Mike's channel. To my surprise, yes, we have them in the city here, and some of my finds are just as amazing as being in the remotest bush. Fortunately, this area has one of the best park systems in the country. One of the largest city parks in the country is here in Tulsa. And it was there that I started gifting the locals after another experience about an hour away. If anything, the beings I've encountered are of a higher nature. Without going into too much detail, as I'm sure you have your own insights into that. I've been quite surprised by it. Every day with them is amazing. You literally have to shed your ideas and misconceptions, shrug off other people's misconceptions because none of it is true. Only by hoping to learn from them what they can teach us to know of their nature. I'm blessed with what insight I receive from them, but to try to explain it is very difficult or hard at times. Oftentimes it just comes out. Some of it feels very natural. Other times I worry I'm not being a good ambassador for them or between our peoples. I think some of us are gifted with this ambassador friendship where you learn from them or like be mentored by them. I don't see what I'm doing as being any greater than what someone else is doing. It's all part of the whole or for the good of the collective, us and them. It honestly feels more like a reunion, coming home to who we used to be, more like them or where we had a closer relationship or bond with them in the past, but we have forgotten that. He is our older brother. And when I have this realization that I'm living this sort of fantastical daydream, it is surreal at times. Other times it isn't, or maybe I'm more open and accepting of this grace bestowed upon me. The bug bites, tired aching feet and legs are physical reminders of why we do what we do. The energy shifts are ongoing and are very real to me. Once you hit a new cycle, it can throw you for a loop and you have to learn to adjust or just take a few days to chill and be with that energy. I find I don't want to be around humans. I want to be around them. But also know I can't be with them all the time. I have to let the energy settle and come back to some semblance of normal. What is normal now? Who knows? When I'm not with them physically, I'm still connected to them through the heart. I feel very much a part of them at times, though I don't understand it. I just know when I look at the results, 
when they show up in my videos and pictures. That's how I started by wanting to see them. First the elementals, but then you realize they are frequently in the company of Sasquatch. When I see the results, it feels like being friends with monsters. Since this time has passed, I feel honored to have been chosen by them. I can't explain it and don't know why I was chosen other than I've since realized I've always had a connection to the elemental realm and seem to be drawn to the Fae. It seems to be some connection that starseeds have in common. I think that's why they show up for me and I see them. Ryan, AKA Friends with Monsters. Thank you.